building a corporation sounds like a daunting task. But according to the Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC, setting up a corporation is just like setting up your own business. But what is a corporation, and why do we need to register it with the SEC? Pag sinabi mong corporation, dalawang klase yan, stock corporation and non-stock corporation. Stock corporation, meron siyang authorized capital stock. The authorized capital stock is divided into shares of stock. Ito yung mga korporasyon na magninegosyo and they are authorized to declare return of investments, we call it dividends. Pag sinabi mong korporasyon, dapat nakarehistro yan sa SEC. Kasi pag nirehistro mo sa SEC yung korporasyon, the juridical personality of the corporation commences from the time the certificate of incorporation is issued by this office. The SEC has made it fairly easy for first-time stockholders to establish their own corporations compared to previous years. They have now provided guidelines and express lanes so that applicants will be able to start their corporations just days after registering. Meron kami yung tinatawag na i-verify systems. That system will tell us whether or not the proposed name is uh, not identical or similar with those already registered. Pangalawa sa mga requirements, yung articles of incorporation and bylaws. The corporate name, uh, the uh, business activity, yung term of existence ng corporation, sino yung mga nagtatayo, ang tawag namin dyan, incorporators. Yung kanilang nationalities and then yung respective residences of the incorporators. Next one, yung board of directors, yung first set of the board of directors ay nakalagay din dun sa articles of incorporation. And then, yung capital structure, ito yung authorized capital stock, if it's a stock corporation. One of the hindrances when applying or registering your corporation with the SEC is when there is another corporation with a similar name. If this happens, the SEC suggests an undertaking to change the corporate name. What is a corporation and how different is it from setting a small to medium business? What are the advantages and disadvantages of establishing a corporation? This show is about making the law work for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. I'm attorney Karen Jimeno. And I'm attorney Rod Nepomuceno. Tonight, we will discuss your legal rights on establishing your own corporation, what you need to know and do about building your own corporation, such as the requirements needed and the steps in establishing a company. Our guest for tonight is attorney Edward Chico, head of the commercial law department at the De La Salle University College of Law. Good evening, Attorney Good evening. Chico. Uh, Thank good you for being Welcome back. Good evening, Karen. Oh, oh yeah. And round two for oh, Attorney Chico. It says something special about you if you're <laughs> you guest here a second or a third time. No, I just yeah. realized TV guesting is a lot like love. Supposedly sweeter the next time. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you for inviting me again. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we're going to talk about corporations, mm -hmm. which is, I think is a very um, popular topic in a sense that a lot of people, especially oh, entrepreneurial yeah. Filipinos, yeah. Uh, they usually ask, is it better if I set up a corporation or just have a business under my name? So, so, propri so proprietorship. Ano yung mga options nila, Tony Chico? What are their options in setting? When they they have a company or they have a business, what are their, uh, I guess, legal options in, in their setup uh, as, a, as, a, as a business? Um, ganito kasi yan, ano? yung corporation kasi is one business form. Mm -hmm. And there are several other business forms mm -hmm. that under the law, a prospective businessman can avail of. Yeah. If the business is relatively small and you are by yourself, then what is workable or suitable for you would be sole proprietorship. Mm -hmm. Now, sole proprietorship, as the phrase itself would suggest, would simply mean that the business and the person are one and the same. Mm -hmm. So meaning you, it's your money, it's your industry, it's your business, everything emanates from you. You call the shots, it's your own show. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you don't have to consult other people when it comes to deciding on certain critical issues relative to the business. Okay. But the disadvantage of sole proprietorship is that should the business become heavily indebted, mm -hmm. then the creditors can essentially run after your personal mm -hmm. properties. So this is, said, these are, are those scenarios in. wherein mm -hmm. if uh, you do very poorly in the business and then you lose or nalugi ka, uh, 
the creditors of that business, assuming kunwari you own a uh, factory of shoes, tapos mm. na luge, they can start to run after your personal assets, like your own house and lot, even your cars, should your money be not enough to pay the debts for them. Exactly, because you and the business are one and the same. Mm -hmm. So, kung sa pag-asawa, parang to become one. Mm -hmm. So, yun yung problema roon. Mm -hmm. So, that's why I always say that if the business is relatively small, then you need not worry because assuming it in car losses, I would assume the it would not be... It would be that big. Yeah, exa mm -hmm. exactly. And so, what about in a corporation compared to that scenario? What are the advantages of using a corporation instead? Well, well, if the business is relatively big, meaning it requires huge amount of capital or resources, or the business is too complicated for any person to undertake or to engage in, then you need other people. And when you need other people, the best thing to do is actually put up a corporation. Of course, you can also put up or establish a partnership. Probably you can also discuss that. But when you put up a corporation, the corporation is a person in itself, meaning it has a juridical personality. Uh, it has a personality separate and distinct from those of the people composing it. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? So the corporation has its own money, has its own assets, has its own obligations. It has rights and obligations which are separate from those of the stockholders. Mm -hmm. And that is very crucial because if the corporation is losing money and there are creditors running after the corporation, then the creditors could not touch on the personal assets and properties of the stockholders because the interest of the stockholders are only limited to their respective investment in the corporation. So limited liability, yeah. that's, that's the thing. Huh? The, yeah, the was, limited liability part of, of the, those involved in the corporation yeah. is one I of the advantages. I guess in yes, our, yes, in our previous advantages. example, what we can, uh, ex in, in order to explain to our viewers, that shoe company, for instance, you manufacture shoes and then if you invested 1 million pesos, if you're the sole proprietorship, meaning you did not form a corporation, and then nalugi ka, if you're, you have creditors na may utang ka ng up to 2 million, the balance, if you don't have 1 million pesos to pay in cash, and then the other 1 million pesos more, they can probably sell your house and lot, your cars, to pay for that debt. Mm -hmm. But if you're just an investor in a corporation and you invested 1 million pesos, hmm. pag naubos na yung 1 million in wala that corporation, na. then wala na. Oh, exactly. Hindi ka na nila pwedeng habulin. And that's, that's even in a scenario where the company name is under a name. For example, Kobe Bryant, of course, Kobe is in the U.S., no? but assuming Kobe was here, he put up Kobe Incorporated. No? So I even in that scenario where the name of the person because sometimes people come up with different unique names, right? Uh, uh, you know, of course, to, to attract people, to attract people to right? actually. Yeah, but sometimes the name is after the main shareholder himself. So even then, you cannot go after Kobe Bryant as a person. Yes, exactly. That. The name has nothing to do with the All corporation right. uh, because once the corporation is uh, up, established or uh, is set up, then it already enjoys its own personality. Okay. Mm. You know, what about kagandaan? taxes? Do corporations get taxed more or higher? Well, let me just put it this way. If, uh, to a certain extent, the, the, the allegation is that if you're a corporation, it pays, uh, kumbaga, victim do siya ng double taxation. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, the corporation should pay for its own net income tax. So you call it the corporate income tax. But on the other hand, uh, once the corporation naman distributes dividends to the stockholders, dividends exactly parang yung kita mm -hmm. na binibigay sa mga stockholders, the stockholders are liable for payment of the final income tax of 10% mm -hmm. on those dividends that are actually issued to them. So parang sinasabi, parang lugi yung corporation, mas malaki ang binabayad niya. But if you actually look at it from a, uh, kumbaga from the perspective of a businessman, Okay na rin yun because the separate personality of the corporation would provide for more benefits in the long run. Mm -hmm. Like as I said, when there are creditors running after you, mm -hmm. then they could not basically go after your own properties because right. my investment is only tied up with what, with what I actually I invested. invested. Okay, now, mm -hmm. now since we, before we get to deeper into, you know, mga, I guess, tax structures or, diba, or using corporations oh, medyo, medyo as, you know, technical. Mm -hmm. let's, let's start with parang the requirements. Yeah. Is it call, that yeah. difficult? Yeah. I mean, considering yeah. may marami palang benefits in corporation, is it difficult to put up a corporation? Yeah. Well, I think basic steps. I mean, I want to put up, I, want, I'm, I have a... Uh, Let's say I have a uh, software company or, you know, and I, I'm thinking I should set up a corporation. What's my very first step? 
Um, under the law, there are three stages. Of mm. course, there's the promotion stage. Mm. Yung promotion stage, you actually get promoters, and these promoters are skilled at marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, they are good at getting people, enticing people to invest. So normally, you get promoters when the when the prospective corporation would require huge resources uh -huh. because you really need a lot of people to actually participate. Mm -hmm. But if that is not the case, the incorporators can do the incorporation themselves, which is the second stage, mm -hmm. incorporation. In incorporation, of course, you have you, you need to have incorporators. Mm -hmm. And under the corporation code, there should at least be five incorporators. Mm -hmm. Now, why should they be five? Because it's a corporation. A corporation to begin with is designed precisely to address businesses where there are a number of people investors. involved mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. investors involved. So what are now the qualifications of incorporators? Yeah. Number one, majority of them should actually be residents of the Philippines. Majority. Okay. But majority. So you can have foreigners. Yes, yes, you exactly. You can have foreigners, you can have non-Filipino residents. So yung mga OFW natin na kababayan dyan, or if you have a parent na may green card na or nakatira na abroad, they can still be investors or corp incorporators. Yes, definitely. In fact, yun nga yung sinasabi natin sa mga nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa. Of course, at some point in time, there wouldn't be any more money that they would make. So, the, the best thing to do is to invest here. At ang pwede nilang gawin kapag ka ganun, eh pumasak sila sa corporation. And they are not required actually to be residents of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But you're, we're talking about the incorporation, meaning the starting of a company. No? You're not talking about investing, let's say, in San Miguel Corporation, which is a public business uh, company. Iba naman yun. Iba yun. Iba yun. Iba yun. So this, this, is, uh, this is that's another setting story. Up this is setting up, uh, setting up. So we're setting up the, uh, the separate juridical personality. And then the incorporator, incorporators majority, can decide. Yes. Uh, majority should be uh, residents. the residents, di ba? But however, citizenship is not a requirement as mm -hmm. a general rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless, unless, of, unless, of course, citizenship is a necessary qualification for incorporators, incorporations which require that certain percentage mm -hmm. of the capital stock should be owned by Filipinos. Okay, that's an interesting point. So we'll go into that, and maybe you can give us examples kung sa unlimited means na dapat Filipinos lang ang may majority, majority or may ari ng corporation. But for now, we'll have to take a short break. Legal Help Desk will return after these messages. So, uh, Attorney Chico, we, uh, before the break, we were talking about incorporators. Ngayon, no? Citizenship requirements. Yeah, citizenship mm -hmm. requirements and setting up uh, of, uh, of a corporation. And pa ba yung mga requirements for Or siguro, just yeah. quickly, an example of a corporation na kailangan at least majority or 60% is owned by Filipinos. Filipinos. Yeah. For example, banking corporations, educational institutions, uh -oh. or anything that has to do with exploration of natural resources uh -oh. definitely or would require 60% ownership. Or one of the pinaka basic siguro that we should mention, pag may ownership ng land. So, for even for families out mm. there, if you're forming a corporation and that corporation will lupa. own mm. land, mm. napaka basic nito. Mm. Kasi sa sabi nila minsan, eh bakit ano lang naman yan na ah? uh, it's a corporation that will operate like uh, lease out a building. But the fact is, pag land kailangan at least. 60% is owned by Filipinos, no? Exactly. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, mass media, not it's many people know this, should be 100% Filipino-owned. Mm -hmm. Advertising yeah. agencies are also, uh, right? I think 70%. 70%. So, maybe, uh, I guess they can, I think that those are constitutional restrictions, right? Those are, yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. but, so, at, oh. but as a general rule, uh, citizenship is not a requirement. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so after, we, after yeah. you already found five people to be your incorporators, what's the next step? Well, the next step is for them to come up with the Articles of Incorporation. Yeah, because a lot of people ask me, eh, what, what, what are an Articles of Incorporation or what's, what are yeah. bylaws? And do you I need mean, lawyers? Do you need lawyers for that? that? Uh -oh. Actually, yeah. before you actually need lawyers because Articles of Incorporation are too technical and probably only lawyers can do them. But right now, because when you go to the Securities and Exchange Commission, may pro forma sila. There is an express lane. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is get the form, fill that out. Normally, nakalagay ng Articles of Incorporation don't mm -hmm. even the bylaws mm -hmm. uh, under the corporation code the bylaws will actually be submitted after the incorporation but of course the sec probably seeing the ordeal every prospective yeah. businessman will go through made it easier now. exactly made it easier so meron na tayong pro forma na application form you fill out mo lang yan nandun dun yung articles of incorporation mo even the bylaws and then you submit the same mm -hmm. ang mahalaga lang malaman what exactly are contained in the article. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, unang-una dun sa article 7 corporation, yung corporate name. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the corporate name under the law should not be confusingly similar with that of another company. Right. Mm -hmm. So, limbawa, ang panga, na yung nakita ako, di ba, yung Cinnabon, mm -hmm. sama naman mag-adverse, I, yeah. I think I can mention that, yeah. ano, yeah. for purposes of academic discussion. So, yung Cinnabon, yun, yung parang yung Cinnamon yan, eh, uh -huh. na masarap. Mm -hmm. On my way here, actually, may nakita akong laundry shop, ang pangalan niya, Cinnabon. Uh -huh. So, I mean, if it's a corporate name, definitely that will not be allowed uh -huh. by the corporation code. But right now, I think the SEC makes it easy for you because you just have to go to the website mm -hmm. and you have to answer certain questions and right there and then you can actually have the corporate name uh, approved by the SEC. Right. Mm -hmm. because, and, and, yeah, because yes. if you don't have the name, you cannot go, proceed to the next And step. if there's no approval, then the SEC definitely will not process the application. Mm -hmm. Nung araw may problema, nung hindi pa tayo computerized, mm -hmm. ang nangyayari dyan, the SEC, of course, because it has a lot of things to do, will uh, we'll approve a corporate name only to find out that that corporate name is either already being used mm -hmm. or at least similarly uh, confusingly similar with another. Yeah. But there's an affidavit that is submitted along with the Articles of Incorporation and Bylaws, pag nag incorporate ka, that wherein you undertake to change your corporate name once, yeah. once if the SEC if finds that there's a pareho mm. or exactly. meron conflicting na. Uh, what about fees? Gano ka mahal magpa mag set up ng corporation? Mula lang naman mag set up ng corporation. I'm not really so sure about the fees, but definitely there are ordinary fees you normally pay for when you apply for something. But you just have to take note that there is a capitalization requirement. Yes. Mm -hmm. So because a corporation normally has an authorized capital stock. Yes. Yung authorized capital stock, this is the amount fixed in the articles of incorporation. If, in other words, this will not, this cannot be increased, this cannot be decreased unless, of course, you mm -hmm. amend said articles. So basically, when you say authorized capital stock, that is the amount that the law, that the law allows the incorporators or the stockholders to infuse. Tama ba yan? Uh, sabihin natin yung parang sa layman. Eh, yeah, exactly. Ito yeah. lang yung pwedeng bilhin ng mga stockholders na papasok sa corporation. Okay, okay. Iba yung capital because okay. capital represents the actual assets and properties Correct. of the corporation. So the amount is already fixed. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, the corporation has an authorized capital stock of 1 million. Uh, at the end of the day, you are of course at liberty to, de to determine how much capital stock would you like to, uh, to adopt in your corporation. So assuming you have 1 million. Mm -hmm. Under the law, 25% of that, which is 250,000, should actually be subscribed. Mm -hmm. Ano yung ng subscribe? These are stocks issued to stockholders, and, and the stockholders are not required to pay for them. At some point in time, they will pay for them, but in the meantime, nagsasubscribe lang sila. Parang you're buying it without Parang paying for it. Parang you're saying paying. na, these are my stocks, sagot ko na to. Like, I will put in this much money in the uh -huh. corporation. So, tira, uh -huh. at tira naman sa akin, attorney, bakit ganun? Bakit subscription, but hindi mo nalang ibenta agad? Uh, you have to understand that the corporation code sees the reality that it's actually difficult to entice in investors. So, ang magandang pag-attract sa investors, huwag kang maglalala, hindi ka pa magbabayad, mag-subscribe ka lang. Subscribe. Oh. So, that's when subscription comes in. Mm. However, 25% of that subscription, which is 250,000 in our example, should be paid up. Dapat bayaran na talaga at yan. At the start pa lang. So, that should be about 62,500. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the proof that that is already paid up? There is a treasurer's affidavit mm -hmm. attached to the application, mm -hmm. which certifies the treasurer undertakes. Uh, the, 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 the under oath, the treasurer is saying Meron. that 25 percent has, mm -hmm. has been paid. That there was a requirement that the bank, di ba, mayroong, uh, what you call a treasurer's uh, affidavit uh, with the with uh, the bank. Ang, 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 so treasurer's yeah. affidavit it indicates the bank where the money is deposited. Eto mm -hmm. yana, kadami ang ginagawa ng mga nagtatayo ng corporation. Since they don't have money, they would borrow money from someone else. Uh -huh. And then they would place it in the bank and then the treasurer will make it appear uh -huh. that that particular amount is paid up. Mm -hmm. However, when the SEC finds out that, it, this is not, that this money is actually borrowed and that money was actually returned subsequently to the original owner, the SEC has the power to either suspend or revoke the certificate of incorporation mm -hmm. because it, that is tantamount to fraud. Kaya gusto kong sabihin nito, marami kasing nandadaya eh. Sige, tayo lang tayo ng corporation. We don't even have money. Don't worry. We can just make it appear we have money. Mm -hmm. So, hindi na siya pinapayagan ngayon mm -hmm. ng batas. And I get so, some insight there. So, they should be careful. Um, this is to our viewers out there. If you are dealing with a corporation, all their documents are publicly available sa SEC. And this is something you can look at. Magkano ba yung authorized capital stock nila? Magkano ba dyan yung subscribe? Tsaka magkano na yung paid in? Meaning yung, yung talagang pinasok na na pera ng investor. So that, kasi nabanggit nga kanina ni Attorney Chico na for corporations, you can go, only go after 
the amount of their investments. You cannot go after the mga properties of each investor. So you have to be careful. Make sure na may enough assets and money yung corporation that you're dealing with. And speaking of uh, mga investments, what if I'm an investor and I don't really have a lot of cash, but I have the talent. I can bring in the ideas, tsaka skill. How can you factor in my investment? Pwede ba yun na I'll just bring in yung mga ideas ko, tsaka talent? Well, in partnership, that is allowed eh, because mm -hmm. you can actually... Uh, in, in partnership, both industry and capital can be considered as investment. Mm -hmm. But of course, when you talk of the uh, oh, yung, yung of the corporation, partner, yes, 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 no? but as a general yeah. when you talk of corporations, you really have to purchase stocks. Mm -hmm. Although, of course, stocks can actually be issued uh, in exchange for services rendered, and that is another story. But of course, you cannot just barge in and say, I'd like to be a stockholder because I'm very intelligent mm -hmm. or because I'm so talented. Mm -hmm. You can actually uh, make use of me. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, that so will be considered. So, ang pwede mangyari would be um, come in, not as an owner, as an but employee. someone working for exactly. the corporation, and then as compensation, the corporation can give you stocks. You should, you should. Para exactly. Para exactly. Exactly. There is a process yeah. that, that, should, mm. that should be observed. All right. All right. We have some questions from our viewers, uh, Attorney Chico, so we'll, uh, we'll ask this one by one. Uh, Thomas asks, how is starting a corporation better than starting a regular business? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Seems to be confusing. Mga, yeah, this is something that we were answering yeah. earlier. Chaka, uh, uh, parang for him, all types of business is a corporation. Is not a corporation. Uh, uh, how is it different from a corporation? Yeah. So maybe actually can... depends. Say yun eh. For example, you'd like to actually participate in the corp in, in the business. If that is the case, you get people you are close with. Mm. So you you form a partnership. Mm. Kaya nga partnership yung partners ang tawag sa inyo. So you are supposedly close with one another and there is so sure, a so certain sure. degree of trust and confidence mm. reposed mm. on the partners. If that is the case, may say ka talaga dun sa partnership uh, at talagang uh, your consent is always necessitated or needed. Mm. But ang problema lang dyan, what if my interest is just to invest? Mm. I don't care how the corporation is run for as long as it's making money, it's okay with me. Then you can probably join a corporation. Mm. Because if that is the case, if you're a stockholder, diba, you're, just, you know, you're just asking the corporation to issue dividends. Mm. For as long as it's making money, you're happy. Mm -hmm. But as to how they basically run the corporation, wala ka namang problema ron, mm. eh. Now, if you decide to form a corporation, what are the advantages? As I said, we've already, talk, uh, we've already discussed uh, that. So, yung limited liability na tinatawag mga attorney rod. Mm. Pangalawa, uh, you need, if you're busy, you did not actually participate. If you remain a stockholder, you just allow the board of directors or the board of trustees, as the case may be, uh, to take control and management of the corporation. Mm -hmm. So centralized team mm -hmm. management. Mm -hmm. right. So these are the advantages. But you, what? You have an advantage that I can add to that. Right is the succession. lifetime. Exactly. Because uh, corporations have a lifetime of 50 years on the average, which you can renew after. Mm -hmm. But for partnerships, for instance, if you have a partner na nabago, kung wari kami ni Attorney Chico, partners sa business, and then he had to move to the U.S. Um, kailangan ko na nun mga i-dissolve tapos maggawa ng bagong partnership. If, for instance, I'll change my partner to Rod, no? Yeah, that's a very good point. Kasi yung corporation, they have this what we call right of succession. Right. What does it mean? It's not affected by change in membership. For example, I'm a stockholder. I decide to sell my stocks to someone else. Now, that someone else will automatically, ipso facto, become a stockholder. Ang problema sa partnership. If a partner dies, for example, or for example, you want to replace one partner with another, you need to get, to get the consent of the other partners. If mm -hmm. you could not get the consent or obtain the consent, then the partnership is dissolved. So, you know, okay. maganda sa, sa corporation, right. mas, mm -hmm. mas, mas parabang mas stable. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. kampante ka, panatag ang loob mo na kahit sino man ang pumalit dyan, kasi hodang magbago ang liderato at ang membership, hindi maapektuhan uh, yung existence. Yung, I guess, yung, uh, well, I, I know we need to take a short break, but uh, let's discuss later also uh, the, I guess, the views of some people, or, they, uh, or I think they're thinking nila that with a corporation, they can have some tax breaks, or parang it's a tax advantage or a tax shelter. Perhaps you can uh, talk about discuss that. that. That's uh, part of then. estate uh, planning, then, no? Yes, I mean. right. Okay, mm -hmm. we still have more to discuss with our guests. Legal Help Desk will return, so stay tuned. So before we uh, took a break, uh, we were discussing a lot of people who are not really into business. Talaga. 
they, they always ask me, sir, can I, can I, uh, attorney, can I set up a corporation uh, for, for tax break purposes or uh, tax shelter? So uh, perhaps we can discuss that, no? Because usually uh, a lot of ordinary folk who are, are not business people just want to set up for the sake of setting up what so in order to have or obtain what they yeah. claim or would be a tax break. At all times, yung tinatawag natin mga holding corporations. Yeah, okay yeah perhaps you can uh, discuss ano ba talaga yung tax repercussions of setting up a corporation and whether it can be indeed a, a tax shelter, as they say. Well, actually, hindi naman siya talaga ganoon. Ano? Uh, it, it all boils down to the issue of the corporation having its own separate personality. Mm -hmm. So, halimbawa, yung business ikaw magbabayad, yung corporation na magbabayad. And to a certain extent, that is actually okay for you. And if you're a stockholder, ah, di ba, uh, for purposes of income tax, hmm. di ba, taon-taon na babalitaan natin si, si, si may, yung, may yung mga artista, uh -oh, yes. sila Willie Lee Villame, ang number yeah. one taxpayer. Yeah. And I often hear people say, paano yung mga sila Lushutan, sila Henry C? So, how come they are not the number one taxpayers? Because apparently, nagamit nila yung corporation. Because instead of paying them as an employer, as an officer of the corporation, mm -hmm. most of the income they get are from the dividends issued to them as the majority owners of those corporations. Right. Eh, pagka, for example, dividends yan, 10% lang yan. Mm -hmm. But if it's an ordinary income tax, for example, for compensation, as an officer, magkano binabayad mo? Oh. Meron table yan eh, nag, nag right. depende how much you earn. But in their case, I would assume, yung maximum mm -hmm. sila. So assuming 10 million ang kinita mo, ang babayaran mo, um, uh, a little over 3 million. Mm -hmm. Pero kung pinasok mo yan sa korporasyon, inisi sa'yo as dividends. Mm -hmm. Ang babayaran mo lang din sa 10 million is more or less mga 1 million. Mm -hmm. So may natipid ka na 2 million. Mm -hmm. So nakikita mo how we can actually become creative when we put up corporations. Mm -hmm. Yun ang kagandahan noon. What kasi. about um, using corporations? As a holding corporation, kunwari, mm -hmm. um, I'm a parent, tapos marami na akong ari-arian, and then instead of giving the properties to my kids, or instead of waiting for me to put up pass a away, gagawin ko, lalagay ko na lang sa isang corporation, tapos papabayaan ko sila maging stockholders ng corporation na yun. To avoid the state tax. Is that tax, very uh, effective? In a way, as magiging part owners sila oh, lahat kasi, ng, oh, ng property. Okay. Kasi ganito yan eh, kunyari mayaman ako. No? When mm -hmm. I die, that's the only time the right of the heirs mm -hmm. would become vested. So doon lang sila may pakialam kung ano mang meron ako. Mm -hmm. Ang problema niyan, when I die, so, of course, I'm no longer around. My kids normally will fight it out. Eh. It's very, very difficult. And aside from that, even if they agree, they will pay for the necessary estate taxes, for example. Mm -hmm. So, ang ginagawa ng ibang mga magulang habang nabubuhay sila, they put up a corporation. Mm -hmm. Since the corporation is a separate personality, kahit mamatay yung magulang, the corporation continues. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, the, the children will be bound by the corporation and will avail of the benefits of, of the corporation. Mm -hmm. So, yun ang kagandahan na yun. Hindi ka na magbabayad ng buwis dahil na ipasok mo na lahat sa corporation. Eh. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. to a certain extent, it's a circumvention. Uh -huh. Wala naman talaga sa corporation code that you are supposed to do that. Uh -huh. Ang mahusay ng na, na mga nag-isip niyan, yung mga abogado. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's okay. not even considered tax evasion, uh -huh. right? Eh, hindi naman yung tax oh, evasion. It's, legal, uh -huh. it's, a legal, it's a legal way, no? Oh, it's uh -huh. a legal way of doing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tama yun eh, kasi uh -huh. eh, yung pinasa mulat sa corporation eh, it's a separate person separate. Eh. Oh. So when I die, my death will not affect the affect existence them. of the corporation. Oh. The corporation then, so maraming right. nagagawa talaga niya. Mm -hmm. And they can actually do that if they want to. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We still have some more questions and we have a ton of questions, me and Karen. Uh, but we will uh, ask questions of our viewers. Mario tweeted, do I need to have stockholders in order to run a corporation? How many? Or maybe we could go back to that. Now, when we were setting up uh -oh. a corporation, you need stockholders. Actually, when you set up a corporation, you need, at, you need to have at least five incorporators. Mm -hmm. Now, after incorporation, it depends. You can actually invite as many stockholders as you can, mm -hmm. or it, it can even be less than five once ah. the corporation is incorporated. But there's a caveat there. Oh. Because if that is the case, the corporate, the SEC might think that you are into illegal activity or something, mm. or that, for example, you are not really operating as a corporation, and the SEC might investigate. So it's better, it's safe to just maintain the five at least. Yeah, maintain the five, and, and get as many stockholders as you can. For us, hanggat hindi pa nauubos yung authorized capital stock mo, hmm. for example, may one million, mm. yung one million na yun, hanggat hindi mo pa naibibenta sa mga stockholders mo, pwede kang kumuha kahit ilan. That's the good thing about a corporation, mm. because it does not, discriminate against people you know and against people you do not know. For as long as they are prospective investors, they're willing to buy stocks, then that's all there is to it. They can become part and parcel of the corporation. And we have another question from Paul who posted on Facebook. 
How should stocks be divided among stockholders? How many percent should remain for the principal owner or stockholder? Well, there's no such thing as principal. Ano? Mm -hmm. uh, all stockholders are treated similarly and equally. Mm -hmm. Ang tanong lang, how much stocks would you purchase or avail of? Or if I have a lot of money, I can even buy half of the stocks of a corporation, then I would own 50%. Mm -mm. Now, if, if I don't have any money, I could just buy less than that, so I could own 4%, oh. 5%. But I guess, Attorney Chico, this is something that we could clarify na the more you own, the more control you also have over the corporation because this affects who has the most voting rights. Yeah, well, to a certain extent, uh, but it's, also, it's, it's only for purposes of electing the members of the board. Mm -mm. Because and once the, the members of the board are elected, ang boto niyan pare pareho na lang. Mm -mm. So for example, I own 60%. Mm -mm. So I should, normally if I own 60%, kasi cumulative yung voting sa stock corporation, I can be guaranteed mga three seats agad. Eh. Out of the five. So if there are five, so two will mm -hmm. come from the minority mm -hmm. um, stockholders. I can be guaranteed three seats. So to a certain extent, I can take control and management of the corporation because the three members are expected. Kakabimo. Kakabimo. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, 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 pero yun naman eh, sa usapang practical lang. Mm -hmm. But in reality, technically, under the law, once you become a member of the board, you are independent and you are only entitled to one vote. Mm -hmm. So should the three members decide now mm -hmm. to act independently, the majority owner cannot do anything about it. Eh, ang problema niya, 60% lang siya. Mm -hmm. Eh, para magpalit ka ng membro mm -hmm. nung sa board, kinakailangan mo at least two-thirds votes eh. Mm -hmm. So yeah. kaya kung gusto mo, if you really want to take control and management of the corporation, you should you at least have two-thirds or elect yourself Ownership. as a member and, and of the board. And elect yourself as a member and of the board. And then elect maybe uh, your own wife, your people, kung yeah. meron uh, kung niya rin share. So, so, and, but, kasi kailangan lang naman one share. But this is something that we actually forgot to mention. Na the value of the board of directors, they act as the managers of the corporation. Exactly. So maybe, Attorney Chico, you can just expound kung oh. ano yung requirements to be a member of the board. Mm. Because ito yung siguro related sa question ni Paul, how many shares should you own? Two. Pag member ka ng board, you should own at least one, one share. share. Yun lang naman talaga yung requirement. Eh. You should hold at least one share. Mm. So, and, and that's, that, that's all there's to it. If you mm. hold one share, yeah. then you are eligible to run for a seat in the mm. board of directors. And once you become a member of the board, then you are part now of the body that takes control and management of the corporation. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Anything that has to do with the corporation will be decided upon by the board. Mm -hmm. And, the stock and this is separate from the officers. Yeah, exactly. Because you have the president, treasurer, uh, the, president, the, treasurer become... and the secretary. Yeah. Under the corporation code, there are only three officers required. Mm -hmm. The president, the secretary, and the treasurer. But the president, the secretary, and the treasurer, uh, their, their functions will actually be uh, determined by the board. Because mm -hmm. it's the board that makes the call. Gives the directions. Now, it gives you know, the directions. Can I be president ako and the corporate secretary at the same time? Or, ah. or the treasurer and the corporate secretary uh, at the same time? Unfortunately, you own yung impediment sa isang president. You cannot be a president and treasurer at the same time. Uh, but can you be, let's say, corporate secretary? No, you, you, you cannot. Uh, you cannot. Uh, so, all, dapat three separate people to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. uh, but of course, you can, if the corporation is big, you can also come up with other officers, like you can have VPs, yes. you can have general managers, and, and those things. But I just would like to point out that once the board is instituted, or established, or elected, the stockholders no longer have any say as to how the corporation should be run or should be governed. So, the only way the stockholders can have a say will be with respect to fundamental changes in the corporation. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you amend the articles of incorporation. So, for example, you increase or decrease the authorized capital stock. But these are fundamental changes. But with respect to, for example, are we supposed to management. enter into this agreement? Yeah. Are we supposed to enter into this contract? Are we supposed to sell this, sell that? Are we supposed to hire these people? Are we supposed to venture into this particular undertaking? The, the, the board is the one who can decide that. Mm. In fact, the board is also the one who can decide whether or not dividends should be declared. The board is also the one that can decide whether or not to file a case in behalf of the corporation. Mm. Ang tanong, eh, paano kung stockholder ako? Meron akong gustong i-demanda in behalf of the corporation, but the board is not doing anything. So mm. you, you, you first have to exhaust your remedies, meaning you have to compel the board to institute the necessary case. But if the board cannot do that, that's the only time you can intervene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hindi ba? Ang tawag doon, derivative, derivative suit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which no, is so actually a topic uh, separately. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that mm -hmm. was very interesting. Yeah. And bitin yung time. We'd bitin like time. to oh. thank our guest. Thank you, Baka Attorney. Baka dapat may part two tayo, no? Yes. Thank you, Attorney Chico. And at least, 
I think we've covered enough for at least our viewers to know if they should set up a corporation, if this is something they should consider for their business or for personal purposes. Like you said, if you're planning to uh, pass on your properties mm -hmm. uh, without exactly evading our tax laws. Yeah. So thank you, Attorney Chico, who is uh, the head of the Commercial Law Department at the De La Salle University College of Law. Right, thank you very much, Attorney yeah. Ed. And, uh, thank you so much. Hope to have you again. <laughs> uh, hopefully, three times, yeah. three times a charge. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Legal Help Desk will return after this commercial break. Interesting yeah. topic. Uh, I, like, I, like this. I like this topic. Eh, kasi yeah. I have a lot of friends who oh, you know, always want to form a corporation. So I'm kind of a SEC. Oh, eh, ako naman yung mga enterprising corporation. friends ko. They always mm -hmm. ask me, Karen, should I set up a corporation? And yeah. today, that's what we learned uh, for mm -hmm. our viewers out there. Some of the basic advantages of, of setting up your own corporation, number one is what you call limited liability, meaning... Kung magkano lang yung invest nyo sa corporation, that's the only amount that you will be risking, that you lose from a business venture. So for instance, if you decide to set up a business and the money that you're willing to invest in the business is only 1 million pesos, if you experience losses, if the business does not do well, your creditors or the people na may utang yung business mo to, um, do not have a right to go after your personal assets. So they can't actually file a case against you personally and then run after your car, your house and lot for payment. It's limited to what the corporation has. So, kung anong nag-invest ka 1 million, then that's it. So, that's one of the advantages. Yeah, and of course, the other advantages, uh, yun nga, yung, yung tax. For tax purposes, some people uh, would, uh, would accumulate, would put together all of their assets, no? All of their assets in, uh, in, in and put it all together, mag-inventory sila, and then transfer their assets to a corporation uh, as part of uh, estate planning. And uh, yun nga, uh, because na transfer na doon yung mga assets sa corporation, when the person dies, uh, hindi na covered yung mga assets na yun, uh, by estate tax. But of course, covered pa rin yung transferring of those assets. Transferring of those assets to the corporation, may certain taxes yun, but usually lower. That's why, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Attorney Karen and uh, Attorney Chico all, uh, mentioned that uh, there are some tax savings when you do that. No? So that's one of the advantages. But uh, we also want, we touched on um, the uh, steps no, of, of setting up a, a, a corporation. It's, it's quite easy, lalo na if your business is yung usual business, no? restaurant, retail. Usually, meron ng mga standard forms, ang SEC, uh, standard articles of incorporation forms and bylaws. And all you need to do is fill up the, the blanks there, which is usually your name, your address, your birthday, your TIN Saka number. Your purpose yeah. of corporation. The purpose that's of your corporation, important. that's yeah. right. And how many shares you're investing in. So, Karen is investing, let's say, 100,000, and Rodney Pumaseno is investing 100,000. So, naka laid down doon sa articles of incorporation. And that becomes sort of like the Bible of the corporation. And once that's filed, normally, pag express lane yan, no, usually takes around maybe 10 days or maybe perhaps two weeks. And then you get your certificate your, your certificate of incorporation. And that formalizes the existence of that corporation. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, one thing about corporations as well, it's, it's managed by the board of directors. So mm -hmm. in that sense, it's quite efficient, especially if you can't do all the managing yourself mm -hmm. because uh, I mean. then you can collaborate with a lot of people and then you can put up your own board of directors mm -hmm. if you're the majority owner you can elect members to the board of directors and they'll be the ones who will manage and run the corporation. Mm -hmm. And they are apart from the officers pa of mm -hmm. the corporation. So yeah. again, a lot of practical uses yes. for uh, corporations. So a lot of it is, uh, in, 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 yeah, when you set up a corporation, it's usually, uh, a lot of it is administrative. Um, so it's just really filling up forms. And as long as there's, your primary purpose is approved and your corporate name is approved, 
uh, in two weeks' time, you should have your uh, incorporation paper. So, so no, it should be no problem. No? The SEC has made it easy for a lot of people, for those who want to put up business. All right. Um, now, so we're done with uh, uh, the corporation code, <laughs> in a way, the corporate <laughs> law. Uh, parang a one-hour summary of the corporation uh, code. No? Now, over the course of the week, we received several uh, questions from our viewers on topics we have uh, previously discussed. No? Uh, like, for example, Amber, Amber uh, asked, uh, I want to have my marriage annulled. I was only forced to get married because I needed it for work. Hmm. My employer didn't allow me to get my maternity benefit unless I was married. What is the process for filing for annulment and how long will it take? So, Nako, malaki problema nitong si Amber. Mm -hmm. oh. Because unang-una, uh, when you're talking about annulment, it's not as simple as saying you were just forced unless parang tinututuhan ka talaga ng barel mm -hmm. at that time na pinagpapakasal ka because mm -hmm. ang, ang duress in order to be a ground for the invalidity of the marriage or avoidable marriage, it really has to be like something that compels you to get married at that point and as soon as mawala na yung force uh, you should question the validity of their of that marriage but pag sinabi natin annulment there's only one ground um, it's what you call psychological incapacity under article 36 of the family code mm -hmm. so uh, amber yung yung reason mo kasi for being forced into getting married which is apparently based on your employment I don't think that would count as uh, the type of force or duress that will make your marriage voidable from the start. At pangalawa, uh, just as a side comment, it looks like your employer was guilty of employment discrimination. Mm -hmm. Because again, you, to give you a maternity benefit, actually I don't even think maternity benefit dapat yung tawag. Kasi maternity benefit, that means uh, pagka may anak ka or mga anak ka, then that's a different story from getting married and hindi naman uh, required yon. So unless, baka hindi clear dito, may, baka meron siyang anak out of wedlock, kaya mm. siya nagpakasal para makuha niya yung but there, maternity but I think the corporate, benefit. Uh, yung corporate policy, from how I uh, understood it, the corporate policy seemed to be like you have to be married in order for you to avail of the maternity yeah. benefits, which shouldn't be the case. No? Yeah. I mean, dapat kung may mat maternity benefits ka, whether mm -hmm. you're married or not. But again, know. Amber, as I've said, you can check if you have grounds for annulment, pero ang magiging ground mo would be psychological incapacity. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with being forced at the time that mm -hmm. you were getting married. Okay. Yeah. Also on annulment, Marisa asked, how can I file for annulment? Both my ex-husband and I already ma are married to different people. How long before the marriage will be declared null and void. Okay. Wow, that's a, a little so, bit of, a little bit complex, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. How, well, uh, apparently they were able to get married, so it's per perhaps some, someone either faked a document and, uh, no, and or, or, I, no, or no, they've been or, married, pero but there's no ang reason niya for wanting to get annulled is that they've been separated for quite a while. As in, talagang hindi siguro nagsasama or nakikita. But they're, but then, they're married there. They're married na to, to no, other no, people. No, right? no. This is a married or with other people. With other lang. people. Uh, uh, but the thing is, okay, Marisa, one, number one, kahit na hindi na kayo nagkakasundo and you both decided to move out of the house at hindi na kayo magkasama ng asawa mo, even if it's several years already, you're still married legally. And the only way for you not to be married anymore is again to file for annulment. Hmm. And considering mukhang wala namang ibang fatal defects yung marriage nyo, kung valid yung, yung marriage license, hindi kayo prior married, or hindi kayo minors nung kinasal, it's a valid marriage, meaning ang only ground you to be annulled, again, is psychological incapacity under Article 36. Hmm. So this is something that you should file for, but again, hindi to basta basta mag grant kung walang finding of psychological incapacity. Mm -hmm. And as to the duration, it depends. Um, depends really on the judge that will be handling your case, kung ano yung pace ng judge, tsaka sa court where it's pending. Gano ba ka raming hinahandle na cases yung court? So, kasi I've seen some um, mm -hmm. annulments that take a year. Yeah. or less than a year. Mabilis, yeah, super bilis and less than yeah, a year. But a year on the case, yeah. to several years. So, iba five years. Tapos, mm -hmm. syempre, but again, if, if, if your situation is the, uh, that of a uh, case now where you, you are still legally married and you somehow were able to get married to uh, another person, uh, you have to be very careful about that because 
that's that's not allowed. That's a crime. It's called bigamy. That's bigamy. So, yeah, that's right. So yeah, you, you, you should have. You have to kind of study that. Obviously, when you're filing an annulment in the first marriage, uh, it could open a Pandora's box for you because they'll discover that you got married again, and it's a crime. No? All right. We also received some comments from our viewers. Uh, RJ tweeted. Um, you are doing your profession a great service. Uh, keep up the good work. Well, wow. good work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you, much, RJ. RJ. Right. Lynn Thank you. posted on our Facebook page, more power to your program. It is very informative and an eye-opener. Keep it up. All Thank right. you so much, Lynn. Thank you so much, RJ and Lynn. And for all those who uh, made comments, mm -hmm. uh, positive comments, uh, starting Twitter and Facebook pages. Well, that's all the time that we have for tonight. We'd like to thank uh, all of our viewers who sent us uh, their legal questions via social media. If you have any questions or comments on tonight's episode, you may send these to our Facebook and Twitter pages. Join us again next Monday as we discuss your legal rights. Good night.